Now, um, what do you think in terms of a sequel? Should have there been a sequel to this game? Uh, most definitely, yeah. I think he's a pretty lovable character. Um, you know, he's got the potential there. The whole kind of head power-up thing is, is a great concept. It's worked for the likes of Kirby and Wario, you know? The whole kind of uh, getting through levels using different power-ups and things. That's right. I, I would love to see a, a sequel now, you know, even maybe maybe 3D. But we'd probably would see it stick to 2D. I get the feeling if Nintendo had created this game, there probably would be several Dynamite Heady games out. Yeah. Nintendo seem to, and I'm not saying they milk their series, they kind of do, but they tend to bring out good sequels, don't they? And they probably would have realised that there was room in this game. Yeah, they, they like to keep things familiar sometimes, you know? It kind of brings you closer to the character if you've yeah. seen them before. And I just feel they treasure missed a bit of a trick here by by not expanding upon uh, the whole Dynamite Heady concept, you know? And knowing Treasure, you know, the second one probably would have been more eccentric. Yeah. More things they could have done. If they, you know, maybe done it on the PS1, they would have had more power to play with and they could have done some more bizarre things. Yeah, I mean, when you uh, think of sort of 16-bit platformers, first two that come into mind, obviously, are the Sonic series and, and the Mario series. But um, the Dynamite Heady is Dynamite Heady is just so overlooked. That's the sleeping power up. A bit like in the, the Pokemon games, if yeah. you uh, use rest. Or well, Jiggly Puff gets you. What's this? Guest puppet invited. The battle show. What's that? Sounds like saying uh, Channel Four would probably put on prime time. <laughs> Next on four, the battle show. <laughs> Sounds a bit uh, violent, though, doesn't it? A bit. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay ticks on poor Daniels. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if I'd want to watch that. It's sort of sounds like reality TV gone y wrong. Yeah. I don't know who would really want to take part in a show called The Battle Show. You know, and when you're signing up for that, signing the release form, yeah, I'm not happy with this The Battle Show. It sounds violent. <laughs> uh, I'm not into that kind of stuff. Is there not? Can I not go on? Dancing on Ice that's high TV uh, or some kind of dancing show I like to dance I shouldn't tell you this but we have got a show called The Dance Show do you want me to put you on The Dance Show yeah put me down on The Dance Show ok I'll put you down on The Dance Show uh, we'll see you in a minute oh great cheers and look at this this clown he's swinging what only can be described as some kind of chain he's loving it chain. yeah he's swinging oh, about you he's dead now Close Encounters. Another pun. Yep. So this is the dance show now. The dance show. Dance show. Uh, that sounds a bit, Who, you know, a bit yeah. more mellow, doesn't it? Who's for the dance show? That's Whoa. me. In, in you come. Whoa. Yeah. Why is there a massive mannequin dancing about crushing people? Whoa, with the flames? There's flames? <laughs> oh, this was going to be a... This was going to be a, a nice thing. Yeah, watch out for the flames. <laughs> You know, personally, I wouldn't want to go on a show where there's a possibility of being crushed by a giant mannequin, you know? No, that's probably one of the things. If I was ever going to go on a show, I'd say... I've noticed in the small print, it doesn't say anything about giant mannequins. Is there any giant mannequins in this show? Well, why would there be giant mannequins? Like, put breathe fire at you. I didn't say breathe fire. Oh. <laughs> Whoop, um, oh, uh, let me just speak to my... Uh, he's made a bit of a mistake, this mannequin, though. Yep. He's, uh, he's, he's got a heart, and he's got it on the outside. It's like a, like a bullseye target. Yeah, a little bit obvious, I think. You know, Hedy's no uh, Dumbo. He knows what he's doing. And on we go. Terminate her too. I, I like the humour of this game. It's, it's not sort of belly laughs, you know. It's just nice, light-hearted humour that just kind of fits the whole theme of the game. Yeah, it's not taking itself seriously, is it? No. This is one of my favourite levels, actually. It's kind of... It's got a lot of puzzle elements to it. Just 
just kind of keep it fresh. It was a pretty um, unfashionable game, though, let's be honest. You know, if you went to your mate back in the 90s, you know, fancy a game of uh, Dynamite Heady, they'd be like, what? You know? <laughs> yeah. But if you said Sonic, they'd be right on it, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. It's just something a little bit kind of unfashionable about. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with Sonic. It's just, no. Uh, uh, th- th- oh, no, no. It's just saying that Heady was overlooked quite we're, often. We're huge fans of the Sonic series. But unfortunately, Heady was overlooked. Invisible Heady here. Not entirely convincing, but... No. He's not actually invisible. I mean, that's the main problem there. <laughs> He's just got a white line around him. Yep. He's trying. Yeah. Can't what, fault him for trying. What he does is, in his spare time, he lays on the ground and people think there's been a murder scene. <laughs> and he stretches his head. It looks like hit, their head's been chopped off. Spinderella. Another one of the epic bosses. Yeah, okay, we get the point. That's the target. Now, this is in some kind of strange fake 3D... Well, it's not 3D, but it's it's basically the same yeah, as pseudo, what you give in the 3D. Yeah, pseudo 3D, perhaps. Hmm. This is uh, one of my favourite boss battles, actually. It's pretty challenging. It's fast-paced. And uh, much like the other battles, it's, it's very unique. It's, it's drawn incredibly well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, a lot of attention's gone into this. And that looks... I know, I know I keep saying this, but for a 16-bit game, that looks pretty good. And yeah. the way that... Head is on the other side now, but it looks... It looks, looks great, doesn't it? It's not confusing. A lot of games at this time struggled with doing things like this. It'd look... It'd be confusing, because it wasn't in real 3D. You'd have trouble working out where you were. But yeah, that's just, it's, um, as well as it can be, really, isn't it? Yeah. You know, don't be kind of um, pulled away by the, the the sort of the challenge of this game, because although it gets pretty tough, you know, most gamers are more than capable of taking this game out. Just uh, requires a little bit of practice, and it's got a good learning curve anyway, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's playable. You know, there's no kind of gameplay issues that make it a challenge. It's, it's, it's challenging because it's meant to be. Mm. It's designed to be like that. This is yet another level kind of displaying the versatility of this game. Kind of... Treasure fancied that they could turn their hand to anything, I think. And you know what? I think they did a pretty... pretty good job. You've got the side-scrolling shooter here. And for a game that, you know, is predominantly a platformer, they really developed this part of the game really well, I think. So yeah, this is Dynamite Heady on the Sega Mega Drive. A, recommend, a recommendation, really. By all means, yeah. Highly. Sorry? Highly recommended. Yeah, definitely. I thought you were saying bye. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were just going bye. <laughs> no. Battleship. I mean, I know Master Chef's on, but come yeah. on. Let's just finish this. Let's, let's wrap this review up. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean... This is definitely one of the highlights of the Sega Mega Drive's lifespan. Go and get it. Yeah. Play it. Go out, go out and find it. Buy it. Play it. Yep. Eat it. Don't eat it. <laughs> no. Nah. Uh... I've been Mooley Man. I've been Brick Road. See you another time. See you later.